Arteta moves smart. Bayern need to sell to buy. Cristiano Ronaldo makes it official. A transfer roundup and today's Emoji Monday is all coming up in the next few minutes as I'm your host, Matt Bolick. You are the one footballers and this is the Daily News. Stuff, but and over the weekend, Arteta made some big decisions, but it turned out to be a very smart move. Now, ahead of the North London derby against Tottenham, he decided that Aubameyang, for disciplinary reasons, would be dropped from the team. Not the squad, but just the team. He sat on the bench and Alexander Lacazette came into his place and ended up scoring the winning goal in what was a huge and fully deserved victory for Arsenal. Of course, the game started not so well for them as Eric Lamella put the visiting side ahead with a ridiculous disrespectful, outrageous Rabona goal against Arsenal, but it wasn't to be his or Jose Mourinho's day. Lemaire ended up getting sent off and Arsenal fully deserved to come back and win the match 2-1. What was most impressive for me was their pressing, their aggression, and just the organisation and tactics that Arteta put in place worked so, so well. If this is the new Arsenal we're going to see moving into the future, well, things are looking pretty bright for them. As for the key players in this, I thought Martin Odegaard was absolutely brilliant not only did he grab his first Premier League goal just a few days after banging in his first Arsenal goal against Olympiacos, but all of his movement both on and off the ball was so, so key to the way that Arsenal played. In fact, they didn't even need a Yang in the end as he didn't even get onto the pitch. It's a big call to drop your captain for disciplinary reasons, but he's done it, it's worked, and now I'm sure the squad has a lot more respect for Mikel Arteta. As for some of the other key decisions in the game, the penalty is a little bit atrocious. Of course, you're going to say, Matt, of course you're saying the penalty is ridiculous. Looking at it again in slow-mo, there is contact. And if you apply contact to the rules, it is a penalty, so I can understand why it was given. But when you actually look at it in real time, Lacazette has completely and utterly scuffed the chance, missed the ball, and then kicked Davis and Sanchez's leg. It's frustrating. I know it's a penalty according to the letter of the law, but it is kind of ridiculous when you watch it in real time. What it also means is that Arsenal now have an outside chance at making the European places. Of course, there are still lots of football left to be played. So really, looking at the table now doesn't even make much sense. I always say, I'm not going to look at the table until match day 33 in a few games' time, because until then, anyone can literally finish anywhere, unless you're Manchester City, who are probably going to finish top. Anyway, moving on from that, and to some transfer news. And over the weekend, there were rumours that Saul has told Atletico Madrid, the league leaders in La Liga, that he wants to leave the club. But having been in the club so, so long and in the first team for the last eight years or so, he's finally decided, the 26-year-old, that he wants to move on. Now, these rumours aren't 100% concrete, but Bayern Munich are reportedly interested in bringing the Spanish midfielder in. At the moment, the likes of Leon Goretzka and Joshua Kimmich are a fantastic duo, but it's really just them for Bayern Munich, and they are heavily relied upon. Elsewhere, and continentally, so is injured yet again, which not only is bad for the Bayern Munich team, but it means they may not be able to sell him in the summer. There's also Mikael Christos, who's having a good time of it at Marseille at the moment. They can get some money for him. And Adrian Fine and Joshua Xerxes may also need to be sold if Bayern are to raise some money. The reason is they've already committed quite a fair amount of money to Dio Upamecano. They are signing Omar Richards, although it's on a free. And while they've got quite a few expensive players on some big contracts, and Bayern, contrary to popular belief, are not made of money. If they manage to sell a few, they may be able to bring Saul in on quite a good deal. His release clause is 150 million euros. No one's paying that for him, despite the fact he's a very good midfielder. But apparently, there were some reports, I think in AS over the weekend, that he would be willing, sorry, Atletico Madrid would be willing to let him go for between 35 to 50 million euros. Like, 50 million euros for a 26-year-old, so not even in his prime yet, quality proven midfielder at Atletico Madrid with bundles of European experience. This is a great deal. This is a fantastic move. I'd be surprised if it happens, if Bayern are the only ones in the race for him. Next up though, and Cristiano Ronaldo has made it official that he has scored more goals than Pele. He gave a big old Instagram post basically saying that he hasn't acknowledged the goal scoring record because he believed in what Pele was saying, that 767 goals was the amount that the Brazilian legend had scored in official games. Last night, Cristiano Ronaldo banged a hat trick because of course he did. It's the only way he knows how to respond to a poor performance from himself and the team in midweek as they crashed out of 
the Champions League. And well, he bagged three goals and now he's on 770 and both him and Pele are talking about how much they respect, they love each other and inspiration and this, that and the other. Of course, the Czech FA is still saying that Josef Bikan is on 800 and something, but apparently that involves some reserve and amateur games as well. So Cristiano Ronaldo is officially the highest goal scoring player of all time. Now, this obviously comes after a weekend during which there have been loads of rumors about him leaving Juventus and potentially moving back to Real Madrid. I will be discussing these further, including all of your opinions like I've asked on the community tab later today in a separate video. But as for his former team, Real Madrid, they won over the weekend thanks to a fantastic double from Karim Benzema, including a last minute winner, which on top of the fact that Atletico Madrid do dropped points by drawing 0-0, means that the title race may not be done just yet in La Liga. As for the title race for Ronaldo's current team, Juventus, they're 10 points behind Inter Milan. They managed to get a win over the weekend. Of course, Juve did as well. And AC Milan, in the middle of those two, lost over the weekend to Napoli 1-0. Along with this, Juventus play AC Milan and they play Inter Milan towards the end of the season. So again, the Serie A title race isn't even done yet either. Anyway, moving on to a quick round up of the rest of the day's transfer news and other news that you might have missed. And Sheffield United, well, mutual consent is how Chris Wilder left the club over the weekend. And then they lost 5-0 to Leicester, so it hasn't exactly been the best week for them. The under-23 coach Paul Heckingbottom will now take over for the rest of the season. Elsewhere, Aaron Thomas Tuchel has said that Chelsea need to bring in a striker at the end of the season. This after firing a blank in a 0-0 draw with Leeds. João Felix is reportedly a target for Manchester City. And actually, you can click here to check out a huge video I made about why this would be a fantastic move for the player and for the club. And lastly, but not not least, we wish well to Angel Di Maria's family. The midfielder had to be substituted during the game against Nantes, a game which PSG actually lost. As is reported, there had been a break-in and a robbery at his house. We, of course, wish him and his family and the other player was apparently involved too all the best. So next up, a quick round up of your Friday feels. These are the predictions that you guys left in Friday's Daily News. And first up, Victor Babarinde guessed that Arsenal would beat Spurs 2-1. Dean's David Neati guessed that Leipzig Frankfurt would end in a one all draw. And lastly, but not least, Neil Shaw correctly predicted that Napoli victory away at AC Milan. Finally, then, we come to this week's Emoji Mondays. This is where we at One Football throw a couple of emojis down over some of the weekend's hottest action. And first off, the best player goes to Kalechi Iheanacho. Norway's given the starting role at Leicester uh, behind Jamie Vardy, sorry, ahead of Jamie Vardy. But this weekend, fantastic. A hat trick against Sheffield United, an all round brilliant striker's performance. And finally, we could see him coming really. Really, really good. A brilliant performance and a deserved best player. As for the crazy moment, I spoke about it earlier. Eric Lamella's goal. The most disrespectful goal scored by an away team in a North London derby. Outrageous. Just a shame for him and the team that it'll be remembered as a game that they lost. And last but not least, the best result does go, as I mentioned before, to Napoli winning at AC Milan. A fantastic victory for them, but things really are starting to slow down for AC Milan in their title hunt. There you have it then. That's all from me for today. Make sure you check out everything else we've got going on at OneFootball. And until next time, I will see you guys later.